So I'll, I'll, I'll have multiple quotes up simultaneously that I'm working on and I'm comparing them side by side and looking at it and going down and making sure that they, they qualify. Okay, <laughs> so how can they reach you? What's the easiest way? Easiest way, um, our direct office number is 214-396-7757. Um, and we'll put it on the screen. Too. Okay. And then my email is david at sublimechoiceins.com. So david at S-U-B-L-I-M-E-C-H-O-I-C-E-I-N-S.com. And if you'd prefer to talk to Ted, you just change David out for <laughs> Ted, Ted and Ted can handle it for you. From but there. if they contact you, they may end up talking to Ted anyway. Yeah, they may end up talking yeah. to Ted. Because we're Which is great. We're He's busy, great. but busy is good. Yeah. Busy is good. Yeah. We're doing yeah. very well. And do you have like a website or we do. We have okay. Sublime what? Choice. Uh, okay. we have Facebook, we have Instagram. Okay. Um, all that stuff. What else? LinkedIn. We're on a lot of different social medias. Okay. Ted is more the social media tech kind of guy in our office. I'm more old school. Okay. If I could, I'd hang a shingle out in front of our <laughs> in front of our building with our name and stuff on it. But um, yeah, I mean, we're basically a referral base. Um, we block out the time to make sure we can take as much time as you want to educate you. And the truth of the matter is, sometimes I'll have conversations with people and they will walk away from it and go ahead and maybe go back to the agent that they had before. But we will call them again in six months, see how things went. Okay. And the information that I supply them with are tools so they better understand this product that they have to have. Uh -huh. Very often times, we eventually, the client eventually comes to us and goes, you were absolutely right. You know, that person that I was talking to that did my insurance all those years, I didn't know what they were talking about. All they wanted to do was sell me a policy and make money. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and we are a, a word of mouth and reputation and hard working and yeah. delivering out what we promise agency. Yeah. yeah. Well, the first time that I talked to you about insurance, you couldn't do better, like maybe $4 or right. like on the amount, right? But then you circle back when it, you know, and said, how's everything going? Well, when my insurance doubled for no fault of my own, right? right? Then I'm like, okay, now I really need you to <laughs> do all this again. <laughs> well, we, like I say, we have. But you didn't try and sell me. That's my point. You didn't try and sell me something no. that I didn't need. Right. You were like, you're good where you are. Right. Unless we visit. Yep. And that, you know, that's important. I think being being honest with people and just letting them know. I, because I'm a broker, I have been exposed to basically every insurance carrier that's out there. So you have to know the products you're selling as well as the competition you're dealing with. So I'm constantly reading deck pages and, and, and policies from other companies and stuff that they send me because everybody changes things here and there. They, they have a new homeowner's policy that's come out that has some bells and whistles or they come up with a new one that Yes, they're giving you all this stuff, but you didn't realize that they took away foundation and water coverage and sewer and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, so the more I spend, more time I spend knowing the competitions, the better I equipped I am to have solutions for them and products for them that actually you can tailor to them better. Um, and what do you want? When, <clears throat> when that claim happens, and you will have one, Water claim, smoke claim, fire claim, roof claim. Is that the time you want to find out that you don't have coverage? Uh, no. Can you even imagine? No. <clears throat> so we have long conversations. We go into great detail. We try and find the product based upon the initial interview that covers their wants and needs. And we try to do it as economically as possible. Sometimes it's not. You know, right, right. Sometimes it's the only option in the area, right. but at least you got coverage right. and at least you know if you have a claim, it's right. going to be taken care of. Okay, this is a separate um, subject, but <coughs> foundation. Yep. I was under the impression that most insurances don't cover foundations anymore. 
A lot of them have taken it off of their basic policy coverage. Okay. But it's an endorsement that can be added. And then I've been told that one point in Texas, if you had a water system for your foundation, insurance was void. Is that that is that an old thing or? Um. You that know, really, that, that really water doesn't... your foundation, don't water your foundation. Yeah. Well, I was in a meeting or something and they said at one point, if you were watering your foundation, that voided your insurance. That your really hasn't insurance. That really hasn't come up. So I haven't seen not... anything like that okay. in a long time. Um, there are particular types of foundations that companies don't like. Okay. Um, some companies don't like the crawl space. They don't know <clears throat> whether it's elevated and all the plumbing is exposed underneath there, especially during periods of extreme cold because all that There's not plumbing a way to under really the house. Insulate it very well. Correct. Yeah. And then some companies really don't like the pier and beam stuff, uh -huh. um, which is amazing to me because they've gone all the way down to bedrock and that thing's not going to be. But um, I guess if they're covering the well, foundation on it. There's pier and beams I've seen that are oh, actual, yeah, yeah. like slabs of wood or, I agree. or just concrete. So it's it's know, very insurance company specific. Uh -huh. um, it's just like uh, when you go car shopping. <clears throat> My wife, <clears throat> last year we got her the little <clears throat> um, the little Ex Lexus SUV and it's got on the, the radar on the front so uh -huh. when you got the cruise control on it slows down for traffic I, automatically. Yes. And then it's got the the lane things yes. if you get up here and beeps and all this kind of stuff and then you go to the nissan dealership and they don't have any of that stuff but they've got this other stuff that's right. really important right. to them <clears throat> it's the same thing with insurance companies okay. there are certain insurance companies over the years that have determined what their niche is and what they want to insure okay. and what they've eliminated because maybe they've had too many claims in that particular area so if you want it you might be able to have an endorsement for it, okay. or they'll just flat tell you, we don't offer that coverage right. on, a, on a home anymore. Um, so understanding what is offered by all these different companies, right. when I'm talking to you initially and finding out, you know, what's important to you? Well, the area you're in, we have, there's foundation issues, right. and we've got mature trees, and right. we, we need Two hundred thousand dollars worth of um, additional structure coverage because we got a shop in the back okay. that we work on cars and right. we park other cars in there right. and we've got a outdoor kitchen and a yeah. gazebo and a pool and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. As you're saying these things in my head, I'm ticking off the companies that are not even options right. for me. Right, you're just eliminating. I kind of like if someone calls me and says, right. I, "I want a house that has this, this, and this." Right. I can. I can start thinking of the, these are the neighborhoods where you're going to find that right. and these you definitely won't. And this yeah. type of conversation, every single morning I have with Ted. Okay. <laughs> Ted and I go over different types of policies, different companies, what's covered, what's not covered, why, <clears throat> why this is not a good option for this client, why this is an area in the state, maybe they're still insuring, but they've inflated the risk so high, the rate so high, uh -huh. they know you're not going to buy. I've got a couple of those companies where, oh yeah, I can get a rate on that house, but um, it's $8,000 for the insurance. Right. Because two things work in the insurance company's favor. Either they don't take on that risk because they price themselves out of the market, uh -huh. or they're the only option, so you're gonna have to pay that $8,000, right. and they're gonna make a profit either way. Right. So, you know, that that's kind of, what you have to understand and there's a lot of nuances and being a broker is so much different <clears throat> i tell i tell ted all the time that <clears throat> we are a dsw the captive agents the state farms the all states the farmers they have one size 10 brown shoe i have i have sandals i have pumps i have tennis shoes, I've got boots, I've got all this stuff. Uh -huh. So there's going to be a fit for you on your property. Okay. And a lot of it comes down to where you are in the state, yeah. the value of the house, the number of claims that you have, and your overall insurance and credit score. 
those are the big four. If we have positives in those four things, I've got multiple options. And I always tell people, we'll do the shopping, I put it into an aggregator, and it spits out several quotes to me. And we'll know right off the bat who's really interested in, in your property. Because I'll have two or three that are competitive and I'll have two or three that are like, no, we don't insure that risk, mm -hmm. or it's three times right. the rate of anybody else. So from there, I can look at those and find out which ones we need to do some tailoring on to add extra coverages to beef up to where we need to be. And does that price us out of the market with those particular policies? Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of, of understanding right. all the products and then tailoring it to the client. So I get this question a lot too. Mm -hmm. If I talk to an insurance broker, am I going to get 15 calls or emails from a bunch of different insurance? No. Um, <clears throat> the, way we, the way we do it is I do the quotes with all those different companies. And they're directed at you, they're, not at they the come person. Di they come directly okay. to me. Uh, I have a, you should see my desk. It looks like the Starship Enterprise. I've got screens all over the place. But, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll have multiple quotes up simultaneously that I'm working on. And I'm comparing them side by side and looking at it and going down and making sure that they, they qualify. Until I actually print a formal quote and do all the reports on it, we're really not going to get anything close to um, being approached by that company. And a lot of these, a lot of these companies know that because we're a broker, I'm not just shopping you. I'm shopping these other companies right. as well. Right. Um, and I don't put the client's email right. in the quote. Okay, so it's not like when they go to apply for a loan and then all of a sudden they got all these. Yeah. But because I'm doing like, all the work for them. That, there is an insurance sunk line that people tell me they they contacted and then all of a sudden they're just blown up the second they put their information in Lemonade or... Oh. Like, yes. And lemonade. I'll be like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> we, <clears throat> we, we, we have Lemonade as an option. Is in, that an actual insurance company? It is an actual insurance company. Then why company. when people contact them, they get billions of... Do they sell all that information or? Oh, uh, it, it's, it's very possible. Okay. We don't do too much stuff with them anymore. Okay. They, I didn't know they were natural insurance. Oh, well, the, <laughs> and, and the thing that also hurts the credibility in insurance is you've got, you know, you got the elephant, you got zebra, you got uh, hippo, um, you've got, right. what's with all the animal names? Right. I don't get it. And then you've got lemonade and it's just, it's like, I don't know who decided on these names. Uh, I, I would rather have something like, you know, rock solid insurance or <laughs> something like, like that. Like State the, Farm. What it was it? Prudential? Is yeah. that the one that had the rock? Yes. Okay, you yeah, know, yeah. it just it just looks more. I don't know. It just looks more um, professional. I mean, I really don't want to insure my car with an elephant. I really am afraid of exactly what's going to happen <laughs> if I have a claim. Um, but they seem to pop up on a regular basis. Okay, I, I guess I'm not a, that's outside of my realm. <laughs> that's funny. And we get, we get approached by a lot of, of companies on a regular basis to um, get appointed with them. But I turn down most of them because there are a lot of companies that I've never heard of before. Uh, okay. um, and there, some of these smaller companies are swooping into Texas now because, because the bigger the big companies are leaving. are leaving. But when you go in and read their reports on AM Best and their, their claims and all this kind of stuff and, and looking at how their, their service stuff is handled, um, it's not necessarily very favorable. So if I am going to be the first line of, of contact for you and I write a homeowner's policy for you, and we find out that that wasn't covered on that homeowner's policy, or you take forever to process a claim, or you, no one can ever reach you and they're right. trying to get a hold of you, I would rather dance with the ones that I had experience with right. and have a reputation with, because I also have more pull with them. 
I can actually call an underwriter or service person from that company and I'm a, you know, a platinum agent or I've been an agent for a really, really long time and they, they can look at my code and know how much business I write with them. They may yield more to doing what needs to be done for the client because they don't want to risk me losing, right. losing all this business right. I've written right. from over years. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're very selective about the companies that we have. Uh, very rarely, if ever, do we have a client that we can't write. But if circumstances come up, they've got a lot of claims and it's a high value house and they just, or it's in an area where the rate's gonna be exorbitant, I would, I honestly would tell them, hey, you know, I'd love the opportunity to be able to do business with you, but I don't have a product for you right now. I mean, it's $6,000 for your homeowner's insurance and you sent me a quote that was for 4,200. Love to have your business, but you really wanna spend $1,800 for me when the policies are fairly similar. So we, we, we turn down a lot of business, but we will reach out, out to clients. I shouldn't say we turn out a, a way a fair amount of business. It, it doesn't happen that frequently, but I'm not going to um, push the issue and I'm not going to try and force somebody into something, right. uh, especially if I look at what they have and know it's pretty similar to what I've got. I mean, I'm a nice guy, but you don't need to pay me an extra $1,800 no. a year for homeowners insurance when you get cheaper. And you're not actually cheaper. a salesperson. I'm not. And, um... I'm a chatterbox. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes a difference. It's kind of like in real estate. I, I, people are like, well, you're a salesperson. I'm like, actually, I can't make somebody buy or sell the house. Right, right. I'm just helping them make the process yes. smoother and giving them and the that's information it. they need. And you know, helping make sure it can it happens. But I, I'm not actually selling them a house. Yeah, I, I can lead you through all this stuff. Uh -huh. You get to the end, and you know, I'm going to ask for the business, uh -huh. especially if I feel that the 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 rate and the coverage is is reasonable. But if you decide to stay with your current agent or go another direction, or for some reason we don't mesh. Um, my phone rings all day. I mean, <laughs> I I have plenty of clients who are receptive to the way that we go about doing it and understand that it's an educational and advisory process is the way that we, we handle insurance. Um, and it's not a fit for everybody, especially with the 20 somethings who want, you know, we talked about this, they need immediate satisfaction and they don't want to spend a lot of time on the phone and they think they can do it on their own. Go right ahead. Go ahead. Because that will be the client that will be on the phone with you the first time something bad happens and say, you never explained this to me, that kind of thing. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we, we pick our clients when the entire time I'm interviewing them, I'm also determining whether or not they're a great fit for what we do. And if, and if they aren't, I'm gonna wish them all the best. And you know, we'll, we'll find clients that fit the mold of what of what we want. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. To come up here. It's always nice to see you. And I know, right? <laughs> and um, nice doing business with you. It's yeah. nice to be able to know I have you and Ted yes. that um, will will help my clients yeah. and um, help them get the information they need to make the best decision. Yep, yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Ha, ha, ha.